crown him Lord of all. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, choir, for that wonderful start tonight, and good evening, everybody. It's good to see everyone here tonight. We trust that you'll be blessed and encouraged from coming out to this service tonight. But most of all, if you're here tonight and you're not saved, that this will be your night. Today is the day of salvation. Tomorrow may be too late. So we trust that as you listen to these songs, Brother Freddie comes with God's spoken word, that you'll heed to the call tonight and come and be saved before it be forever too late. Turn in your inbooks to number seven. I know you probably heard this before a couple of times, but we haven't heard it. The fisherman's been away. Amen. So we want to sing this a beautiful hymn. It's a favorite of everybody. So we're going to rise and sing, Oh, beautiful star of Bethlehem, shining afar through shadows dim, giving a light for those who long have gone and guiding the wise men on their way up to the place where Jesus lay, beautiful star of Bethlehem. Let's rise and ring this out to the glory of God. Thank you so much for that good singing. Shall we look to the Lord in prayer? Our Father in heaven, we're so thankful tonight for the glorious message of the gospel. 
We're so thankful that we can be found in a place tonight, unhindered in any way, to once again preach forth the good news of salvation. And we're so thankful, Heavenly Father, for this time of the year when we celebrate the birthday of a king. The Lord Jesus Christ came as a babe in Bethlehem's manger many, many years ago with the purpose in mind to go to the cross of Calvary to suffer, bleed, and die that we might have eternal life. We can't think of the cradle without thinking of the cross and his love that he had for us. And as we go through this Christmas season this year, may each of us just take the time out to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for coming the first time as a babe. And may we each one realize those that may be here tonight that know not the Lord Jesus in a personal way that he's coming back again. And if they're not ready, they're going to be left behind. Oh, Father, we pray that each one in our gathering tonight, those that might be watching by way of television, will just stop and consider tonight of where they're going to spend eternity. May they realize the awfulness of going out into a lost eternity in their sins forever and forever. And we just pray for Brother Freddie tonight as he comes to speak for the message for thee. We just pray that thou hast given the liberty and the freedom that he needs tonight. And we pray that thy word will go forth with much power and that thy Holy Spirit would convict each one in this meeting tonight and know not the Lord Jesus in a personal way of their sins and cause them to realize that they need a Savior. Bless each one that will be taking part tonight, each selection, the choir, as we sing together, Father, and we pray that thy name will be magnified and glorified tonight, for we ask these things in the precious name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, like I said, it's good to see each one here tonight, those that might be visiting here with us tonight. we so glad that you're here. We extend a hearty welcome to you, and we pray that you'll come back and be with us again. Right now, we're going to be favored with a trio, this little child, followed by the choir, come and worship. Empires have been built and fallen 
only time has made a change. Nation against nation, brother against brother, man so filled with hatred, killing one another. And over half the world is starving, while a banner of decency is torn. Debating over disarmament, killing children before they're born. And fools who march to win the right, to justify their sin. Every nation that has fallen, has fallen from within. Yet in the midst of this darkness, there is a hope of life that burns. This little child, the King of Kings, someday will return. And I believe, and I will always sing, this little child. child was who the prophet said will return to judge this world the living and the dead oh can't you see that long ago so very far away this little child our only hope was born
it's my privilege to call on our brother Freddie for the message. Thank you, Brother Gerald, and good evening. Boy, you know, you get good singing like that. It helps you with the message. It really does. I believe Brother Frank would agree with me tonight on that. And we thank you for the time that you do put into it. Thanks for coming. As I always say, I realize you could have chosen to have been somewhere else this evening, but we thank you that you chose to be with us. Trust you already been blessed, and you'll receive yet another blessing as we look into God's Word. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 2. Matthew, chapter 2. Well known story. Verse 1. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen a star in the east, and are come to worship him. When Herod the king heard these things, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet, And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privately called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again, that I may come and worship him also. When they had heard the king, they departed, and, lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. I'm sure the Lord will bless us that reading from his precious word to our hearts. Behind every name, there is a story. Who gave the name? Did it reveal the individual? Names in God's word teach us a lesson. For instance, Jacob. His name means supplanter, cheat. Jacob was just that until... He confessed to God who he was. When God asked him, what is thy name? He said, Jacob, I'm a cheat. I'm a sinner. And you know what? God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And that means prince with God. Friends, tonight, if you're here without Jesus Christ, and you will acknowledge to him, agree with God who you are. Take sides with God and acknowledge to him that you're a sinner. And turn from your sin. God will change your name tonight. You know what? He'll change it from a sinner to a saint. He'll change it from a child of Satan to a child of God. You must be willing to acknowledge and agree with God. On who you are. You know, salvation is a free gift. <laughs> you don't have to do anything for it. A man up in years got up in one of Mr. D.L. Moody's meetings and said he would like to say three things. He says, it took me 42 years to learn these three things. 
Mr. Moody says, I pricked my ears and I said, huh, if I could learn in three minutes from this man what it took him 42 years, I'd better listen. He says, the first thing I learned, I didn't have to do anything for my salvation. Mr. Moody says, that's good to, well, to know. Secondly, I realized God didn't require me to do anything. Thirdly, I realized that Jesus Christ had done it all. And all I had to do was take it. Friends, that's the gospel message. That's the Christmas story tonight. All you have to do is take it. And go out of this building tonight, born again. Before you turn that television off tonight, you could be saved tonight. An aged saint asked to give to describe salvation. And here's what he said. It's something for nothing. That's a pretty good definition. But an aged, another aged saint who heard that story, who was weathered the storms of life and nearing the heavenly shore, oh, he says it's much better than something for nothing. It's everything for nothing. Friends, that salvation tonight, that's the Christmas story. Salvation is offered. It's free. It's not cheap. It costs God everything. It costs Jesus Christ everything. It's the last drop of blood that you might have it tonight. Tonight I want to look at three little words in the text we read tonight. And it's a question. Where is he? Friends, tonight, that's a very important question. I say that because it's got to deal with your relationship with God. Where is he tonight? Could I first speak a word to the Christian? Where is he in my life? Where is he in your life tonight? You might be in, say you're a Christian tonight. Does he have full control of your life tonight? Or, or, or you're, like Brother Frank said in the Bible class last Sunday, you, you seem like a spare tire for your convenience. You only think about him when a problem comes in life. Let me ask a question to all of us who name the name of Christ. Are we closer to him this Christmas season than we were last year? Something I need to ask myself. Something you need to ask yourself tonight as a Christian. But the thrust of the message tonight is for the lost. And I ask you tonight, if you don't know Jesus Christ, where is he tonight? Friends, if you have never asked him into your life, he's still on the outside of your heart. I don't know how much longer he'll stay knocking. It might not the last time tonight. Are you got room for him tonight? Have you ever made room for him to enter into your heart? Room for pleasure? Room for business? But for Christ the crucified, not a place that he can enter in your heart for which he died? Friends, you hear tonight or watching my television and, and you never Asked him into your heart. You got room for everything else, but not for the Christ of Christmas. Oh, I pray tonight that you would make room for him. Because as I just said, he might not knock any longer. Indeed, an important question. First question actually asked in the New Testament. And if you notice, it's asked by wise men. They were determined to find the Christ. How about you tonight? They traveled many miles that they might find him. Friends, listen tonight. 
You don't have to move out of your seat. He's right here. You could call out tonight and ask for forgiveness and receive it. Where is he in your life tonight? You know, it reminds me of a similar question that was asked way back in the book of Genesis. And God asked that question. And all of God's questions are important. Make no mistake about it. And God is talking to Adam and Eve. And he says, where art thou? It's a similar question. Not that God didn't know where Adam and Eve was. But God wanted them to admit what they had done. You see, God is a God of grace. He didn't come down in wrath. He come down in grace and give them a chance to admit their wrong. That's why he's asking you tonight, where is my son Jesus Christ? In his loving grace, he knows where he is in your life. But he's asking you in his grace tonight, where is he? Admit to me where he is. Confess your sin. All of God's questions are important. And God is still asking that question 6,000 years later. Where art thou? Or where is he in your life? You know Adam's answer? He <laughs> says, he was afraid. He says, I was afraid and I hid myself behind a few fig leaves. Friends, tonight, what are you trying to hide behind tonight? You can't hide from God. Are you hiding here tonight and you're in this service behind some false profession? Your life doesn't back it up? Friend, I'd be sure tonight if your life doesn't back it up that you're real. Many a person are hiding behind some words they said some years ago and Live like the devil ever since. Folks, don't hide behind that. You might wind up in hell. Many people are hiding behind good works. Many people are hiding behind being a church member, doing some good of some kind. Folks, let me tell you, the only place you could hide tonight is behind the cross of Jesus Christ and his shed blood. That's the only place you could find forgiveness. The tempter Satan uses the serpent to deceive Eve. You know what? He's still deceiving men and women today. He hasn't changed. And, and he deceives men and women by saying, there's plenty of time. Take it easy, man. Uh, don't rush it. I remember I was in, in, in Harbor Island right after the earthquake in 80. It was a, about two days later, I spoke to a woman. I said, are you a Christian? She says, no, but I don't believe in rushing into it. But it take my time. I said, and if you would have been in 80, and you would have been caught in the earthquake and lost your life, where would you have been? She so said, "L, I don't have any time. I'll take him right now. Folks, how about you? Tonight. Plenty of time. I believe there will be more people in hell from this Bahamas by that deception than anything else. Plenty of time. The fable is told that Satan met with his demons. I said, how could we stop so many Christians from being saved down there on earth? One said, I got the answer. I'll go and tell them there's no God. Satan says, that's no good. <laughs> they could look up in the heavens and know there's a God. That's no good. The other one said, now go and tell them there's no heaven. <laughs> All that you hear about heaven is not true. He says, man, they got the Bible. They know it's a heaven. The other one said, I'll tell them there's no hell. He said, man, they know that Jesus spoke more about hell than he did heaven. That's not going to work. The other one said, I got the answer. I'll go and tell them there is a God. There is a heaven. There is a hell, but you've got plenty of time. 
And Satan is still deceiving men and women today. Plenty of time. You might be here tonight. You might be watching my television and think you've got lots of time. Folks, you could be in eternity before we get out of that door tonight. Where will your soul be? Plenty of time. Satan deceives by saying, death answered all, man. <laughs> Live like you please, man. After death, it's all over. Friends, listen. After death, life just begins. It just begins. But where will it be for you? Heaven or hell? It's serious. It is. And then he deceives people by saying, there are many ways to heaven. <laughs> and people are still trying. There is a way, as I said in the Bible class, that seems right unto a man, but that end is the end of death that will lead to destruction. Many ways to hell, but only one way to heaven, and that's through Jesus Christ alone. Yes, Satan is a deceiver. The Lord Jesus said himself in John 8, 44, says he's a liar and the father of it because he started back in the Garden of Eden. That's why Paul, through the pen of the Holy Spirit, penned these words, put on the old armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Christian, we need to put it on. You say, why? Because we'll fall if we don't. We won't stand. But those, that one word caught my attention again today, the wiles of the devil. Friends, listen. His wiles are attractive. Don't let anybody kid you. The first person took that drink of alcohol. Oh, wasn't it attractive? The first person took the cocaine. Wasn't it attractive? Only to awaken next morning and be deceived. You see, it's not as wild as and only attractive, but they deceptive. That's Satan. It wasn't all as good as what he said. You get up with a splitting headache. But not only is Satan wild, deceptive, but they're ensnaring. You see, they're attractive, deceptive, but then Satan set the trap, and he's got you in the snare. He's got you in his trap. He made it look good, but now you need more and more and more. And many a, a young lady has sold her body to get another eye. Many a young man has sold his soul to get another eye. Listen, friend, sin will take you further than you want to go. No one intended to be an alcoholic. No one intended to be a drug addict. Not only will it take you further than you want to go, but longer than you want to stay. No one wants to stay there, but it's got a grip on them. And more than you want to pay. Many a person, it has led to death and hell. No one wants to pay that. Tonight, all is wilds. Friends, tonight, where is he? Where is he tonight? Important question. You see, Satan's tactics haven't changed. Not in the least. You see, he brought three doubts into Eve's mind back there in the garden. He first got her to doubt God's word. As God said, and that's what he first starts with, you see. But listen, friends. God's word stands forever. It will never change. It's the same today, yesterday, and forever. Then he got it to doubt God's punishment. He says, look, you won't surely die. And he, and he deceives men like that again today. He says, look, you're not really going to die. Don't listen to that. God says, after death, judgment. He got it to doubt God's punishment. And then... He got it to doubt God's goodness. Why would he withhold one tree from you? God don't want to give you his best. Listen, friends. God wants the best for you tonight. You say, Freddie, what do you base that on? John 3.16. 
For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. God gave his best for us. He wants you to have the best. Why not receive it? You know, the result back there in the Garden of Eden, their eyes were open. They realized they had sinned. They were naked. And when Isaiah realized that in Isaiah 6 and 5, when he saw the Lord, he says, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. What Isaiah was saying, I'm, I'm ruined. I'm like a dead man. I'm dumb. I'm silent. I can't say anything when I see my wicked condition. Friends, that's going to be your words when you get to stand before the judge. You're going to say, I'm a ruined person. I'm undone. It's over. When you see God puts before you everything in a moment of time, every sin, you'll be speechless. You'll have nothing to say. You'll know it's over. Oh, I pray no one will go out into eternity like that. Then their self-covering. They try to cover sin, and people still try to cover sin today. Friends, let me tell you, the only thing that could cover your sin, the only thing that could remove your sin, is the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, I pray you turn to him. And then it was separation, you see? Separated from God. Friends, look, sin separates. Sin separates. It separates in physical death. And this past year, many a, a Christians here uh, have lost loved ones. Sin separates. But for those who have been saved and gone on before, it's just for a while. We'll soon be reunited with them. But friends, tonight, if you go out of this life without Christ, you'll be separated for an eternity. I'll say but sin separates eternal. Revelation 20, 14, death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Folks, eternal separation. Oh, I pray anyone listening tonight, that would never be your condition. They were afraid. You see, sin makes you afraid. You might say you're not afraid here now, but listen at these words in Isaiah 53 and 10. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burning? You'll be afraid then. When you see there's no way out. But then they made excuses back there. She blamed, he blamed, the, Adam blamed Eve, he blamed the serpent. Folks, listen, every one of us is going to give an account to God for himself. Scripture says, every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give an account, therefore, in the day of judgment. Friends, again, I ask you tonight, where is he? A very important question. As I said, all God's questions are important. You might ask tonight, well, Freddie, could you give me a, a f one or two or three maybe from the Word of God? God's questions, yes. Could I give you this one? What shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Would you agree with me tonight and with God that that's an important question? Friends, let me ask you the question. What would it profit you? Not if you gained the wealth of Spanish wells, the Bahamas, United States, the world. You had it all under your control. What would it profit you if you lose your soul? That's an important question. You've got to answer that tonight. 
Friends, the answer is nothing. Because everything you work to gain, everything you, you sweated for, one day you're going to leave it. They bring your body, put it in a casket. It's not going to have a single thing in it. But your soul will be somewhere. Either in heaven or hell. Let me give you another one of God's questions tonight. What shall the end of them that obey not the gospel of God be? Friend, let me ask you that again. What will be your end if you disobey the gospel of Christ? What do you think it will be? Friends, God's word says it will be eternal punishment and separation from him forever. That's serious. Let me just give you one more of God's questions tonight. How shall you escape if you neglect so great salvation? Friends, that's important. Could I answer that for you tonight? There's no escape. No escape. Separated from God, from family, in hell and torment. But uh, that's why I ask you tonight, where is he? Very important tonight. Not only is it an important question, it's a personal question. It's not the person sitting beside you tonight. It's not your wife. It's not your husband, your brother, or your sister. God's asking you, you, where is he? You have to answer tonight. Not only is it important and personal, but all of God's questions are serious. Friends, I say that tonight because it's got to deal with your soul. That soul that will live forever and ever. That's serious. It is. Where is he? You see, it's not only got to do with your soul, but it's got to do with God who will have the final say. That's why I asked you, where is he tonight? Not only does it have to do with your soul and God, but folks, listen, it's got to do with eternity. It's no end. You just consider that tonight, that you'll be in a place and you can't do anything about it forever and ever. It's serious. And it's got to do with hell. That's why I say God's questions are serious. And that's why I ask you one more time. Where is he? Where is he? Friends, you're either in Christ or the world. You're either on the road to heaven or the road to hell. You're either saved or you're lost tonight. But not only are God's questions serious, but they are imperative. Meaning, they cannot be avoided. You see, friends, it demands immediate attention. See, because if you don't answer it today, you're going to deal with it in eternity. See, that's why it can't be avoided. Where is he? Where is he tonight? You see, where is he or where art thou proves two things, that man was lost and God came to seek and to save him. Yes, that's the good news tonight. It proves man's sin and it proves God's grace tonight. You might ask me, Freddie, why did he come anyway? I'm glad you asked. Paul says, in 1 Timothy 1.15, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That's why he came. That's why he came born in a stable and cradle in a manger and then went to Calvary that he might save you and me. Where is he in my life? Where is he in your life? Friends, he's either on the inside or the outside tonight. Revelation 
as we bring the message to a close. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will open the door, I will come in. I ask you another question tonight. Are you willing to open your heart's door tonight and let him in? Don't be foolish and go outside or turn that television off without asking him into your heart's door tonight. The Lord Jesus used simple messages. He says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. You know, there are all sorts of doors in this world. There are open doors. There are closed doors. There are solid doors. There are sliding doors. All types of doors. Every home has at least one door. And to enter, you, I think you'll agree with me tonight, to enter into any home, you must go through the door. Could I tell you tonight that heaven has a door and only one, and that door is Jesus Christ. Folks, to get in, you've got to go through that door. I am the way. Will you be willing to enter that door tonight? I close with this short story. About 44 years ago, 66 soccer fans lost their life when a staircase collapsed while watching a Rangers Celtic soccer game in Glasgow, Scotland. One of the survivors described it like this. Everyone was struggling to get out and crying for help and no one to help. After 15 minutes, I was dragged out by a policeman. Friends, listen tonight as I close. If you die without Christ, you'll have an eternity struggling to get out of hell with no one to help you, no one to rescue you. Jesus Christ wants to rescue you tonight. He wants to rescue you tonight from that awful place. Will you let him in tonight? Let's pray. We're going to have a short prayer, and we want to sing one verse of number 700. Brother Frank has used that hymn, and it goes so good with what we've been saying tonight. But friends, in the quietness of this moment, right where you're seated tonight, the message has been a solemn message tonight. Will you right now, right where you're seated, without any big to do, say, Lord, I'm tired of keeping you outside of my heart. Right now, right now, I'll let you inside and take you to be my Savior. If you do that, what would you tell us about it? Or maybe you would like to walk down the aisle as we sing in that, that hymn tonight and let us know that you've done it or you want to get right with God. Maybe you're away from the Lord. You want to get right with him tonight. Folks, as the year comes to an end, it's nothing like being right with God. Might be your last chance to get it right. Why not do it tonight? Father, again, we realize the seriousness of the message for a person to go out into eternity and be lost forever in torment. Oh God, we pray that by your spirit tonight, if it's one ear or watching, that you would so move and convict tonight that no one would leave here tonight without knowing the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. We ask it in the name of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Number 700 in the redemption song. Who is he that's waiting, waiting just outside the door? Who is he that's knocking, knocking, as he knocked before? Rise and bid him enter in. 
peace and hope will bring. Tis thy Savior knocking, knocking. Tis thy Lord and King. Let him in. Friends, why not tonight? Let him in. He waits outside the door. Let him in. Ere he departs to return no more. What if he don't return anymore? To go out into eternity lost. Oh, friend, be kind to your soul. Don't leave without trusting him. First words and chorus, the meeting will be over. <clears throat>